Hi everyone, welcome back to another edition of the Velvet Lounge Life. I am going to unbox um, some viewer mail. Thank you so much, Ms. S. Again, you are spoiling me and I like it. And I so appreciate it. I just can't tell you enough. Um, please, if you need something, if I can help you supply it, let me know. Um, also, leave a comment down below just to let me know that you actually saw this video. Um, what you see here are some items I will be using on my charm string projects because one of the steps in creating a charm string is to collect the buttons collect the little implements that you're going to use as danglers, um, you know, extra bits and bobs that you're going to add to your charm string so that it is personalized and special. And when you look at it, you can tell a story to those that see it and you're able to touch some of the objects that belonged um, to those people. And you are able to, you know, kind of keep their stories alive. So I'm making a charm string for my husband. I also am starting one for my mother-in-law and my aunt-in-law. Um, my aunt-in-law is more of an aunt um, to me than probably any aunt I've ever had. She's beautiful. She's just an amazing person. And... We adore her, um, but I'm going to create a charm string that will be, um, it's sort of, I'm going to call it a dedication charm string, and the reason I'm calling the, it that is because my mother-in-law died um, in 1990, I, no, I think it was in the year 2000, 2001. Um, maybe it was even before. No, I think it was like about that time, maybe even earlier than that. And my aunt-in-law is still alive. So I can't make it a memorial, thank God, because aunt, you know who you are, is still alive. I'll even say Aunt Jeannie. Um, but so they're going, that will be one charm string that I'm creating that will be basically a dedication to the two ladies. The one that I make for my husband, obviously, is simply for my husband. Now, is it common to create a char charm string for a man? No, but why not? Men collect things. They have lots of little bits and bobs. Um, buttons are on their clothing also. You just need to, you know, make sure you are definitely paying close attention to not feminizing the charm string that you're creating. If your guy is a manly man, um, if he dances on the side of a rainbow, nothing wrong with that. I have plenty of folks that I know that do, and I adore them. But, you know, I know my husband, so I'm going to just make sure that what I use are buttons that remind me of him. And when we have grandchildren in the future, then when my daughter and I and my husband are telling them the stories about ourselves and looking at these things, they they mean something. Plus, you have to think about it. I'm making it now. We might not have grandchildren for like another like five to ten years. So you really want to make sure that when you look at these things, it evokes those memories. So... Enough of that. Just wanted to show you that I'm at, still at phase one. I'm still trying to collect um, enough meaningful buttons. Um, like I said, my little bits and bobs, which I have, you know, this was one of his training whistles um, that I can attach to his charm string and then the one for my mother-in-law and aunt-in-law. And this is where I am so far. So I have a ways to go as far as collecting buttons and things to help with these projects. And that's part of the fun. I've been collecting things for my husband's um, for probably, 
I'm going to say seven, eight months. And for my um, mother-in-law and aunt-in-law, I've only been collecting for theirs probably for, oh, I'm going to say maybe a month and a half. It could be two months, but it's about a month and a half, two months. And I foresee myself having to collect a lot more for them um, because I don't have a lot from their family. So... I did, you know, talk to my aunt-in-law, told her what I wanted to do and create. And she said that she was going to look to see if she had any buttons, bits and bobs that I could, you know, use. If she does, awesome. If not, I'll just struggle to hopefully get enough together where it makes sense. It may not be as extravagant as the others, but, you know, it'll still mean something to me and my family. So, mail time. Let me make sure I crossed off all of the identifying information. I don't need you people going to folks' houses. I'm only kidding. I know that won't happen. <laughs> but there's my... <laughs> that's me. That's fine because it's on the About page of my YouTube channel. You can find a lot of information there about me. Um, so I received this box. So I want, um, uh, first of all, Ms. S to see that this is the condition that I received the box in. I did not open this box. I don't know if she recycled the box or not, but I was kind of like surprised if this is something that was done by the post office, um, because I know they do check packages sometimes then they're supposed to add a special sticker to let you know that it went through a postal inspection. And I think they're supposed to put it in something else to deliver it to you. I don't think it's supposed to be like this button is hanging out. And also it's like open like right here. I could just put my finger in there. And when we picked it up at the post office yesterday, this is exactly how it was. I never, I haven't opened this yet. So I know she said she was sending me something and she gave me a general idea of what. So um, we were expecting the package. So that's really awesome that you let me know and I appreciate that. So let me just start by running. I'm using my little charm string scissors on this because these are super sharp. And let me just see if I can open it without damaging anything. Oh, and something I'm going to show you guys, if I have time at the end, is this staircase. There's um, an idea that this is an internet trick uh, where someone actually, I guess, Photoshop maybe all of these buttons on the staircase. Or are they from an old button factory that was defunct? What's weird is that they're all over the stairs. Um, and that seems like it would be dangerous if people had to leave. And then there is a story that maybe there was an explosion there and that's how the buttons ended up everywhere. But I'll show you guys that. So I'll start with this bag. I'm not going to like showcase every single button, but I will definitely pull out enough. So this has a bunch of cloth buttons in it. And I always like, these are um, very interesting because they have like the side holes. This one has like a tack stuck in it. Like someone literally, I think, stuck a tack in this, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks like a tack is stuck in there. I like those more than I like these that have the cloth lump on it. We always call these mushroom lumps for some reason. I don't know why. And these you would like put the string through, but over time, this could actually wear away. So these are, they're old buttons, all of them. But there, so there are several cloth buttons. This is a cool like graphic. I will definitely probably be using that one. And this one, if you could see it. And probably there looks like a couple tweed ones that I could probably use on my husband's charm string. And this one, these on my in-laws. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. This says duplicates because she knows that I, all, I have this button right here. I have this one. You 
watch the videos. Thank you so much because you actually know what's in my little repertoire. I haven't shown every button I have, but I definitely have this one. Um, this one I don't have, so maybe this is a duplicate of hers. This is really nice. I like the, um, the impressed design on it. It even has a little bit of that Aurora Borealis effect on the back of it, just from aging. And this will be great as well for my projects. Move those out of the way. And these are extra, which I don't know what that means. I think they're extra buttons that she had. AKA maybe duplicates, maybe. Let's see if I can get them out of the bag fast enough so that I don't bore you to death. Sorry. Ooh, look at that with all the right. You know I like glitzy. I don't like wearing a lot of glitzy things, but I love looking at them. And something like this will be beautiful on a charm string because it will really, you know, add that depth of interest to it. So that is very nice. Love it. And look at the shank on the back. And here is another one that has rhinestones, and I think it's metal, yep, some sort of metal, base metal, and then you have all these um, clear rhinestones embedded in the black. This almost reminds me of mourning jewelry, like M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. <laughs> I'm also looking at something while I'm like spelling. I guess I can't do two things at one time. But if this had more black in it, that's exactly. It would be because they had mourning um, buttons as well. So when you were mourning your loved one. And let me see if I can make that larger for you. You would wear like black jewelry. Of course, we know about wearing black clothing as well as black buttons on your clothes. So hopefully this is actually coming in clear for you and not too dark. So what else? I'm going to move this over. So here we have some interesting buttons as well. Lots of character. Look, this one has an Asian design and it's made of... I don't know what it's made of. It seems like it's made of, it's definitely a hard plastic. It does not have the shank on it, but I can still use this for one of my other projects. Um, a button project that I'm looking at doing, um, and I'm exploring this, I haven't, I'm gathering things, but I haven't um, created a concept or even know what shape it's going to be yet, but you know, we'll see how it goes is um, creating memory jars. Uh, what they would do to create a memory jar is you would take things such as buttons um, as well as other, once again, miscellaneous bits and bobs and you would use window putty. So it has to be like wood window putty um, to attach the various objects to a jar so you would use a glass or even a clay jar back in the day they would have used a clay jar and I sort of want to find like a clay jar and I definitely have some as you know from the other side of my doings look at this this is more of like a bead but it, it seems like it's made of glass and it def it has like lots of little flecks and flakes in it and orange is a color that you don't really see a lot so this is definitely going to find a place. And of course, you know me, I just dropped it, but I just picked it up. That was fast. So there you go. So yeah, so you take, you know, these different things, you use window putty. And the reason you use window putty is because it works. Um, there are other, th and also it doesn't leave strings and extra residue and it doesn't, like whatever color the putty is, it might get a teeny tiny bit darker, but it pretty much remains the same exact color almost. So you get an idea of like 10 years from now, as long as you dust it, you know, what it will look like. So I want to make like a giant memory jug. 
So these are some glass buttons. Re this one is a reverse painted glass button. And if you have glass buttons that have like, like this one has a little bit of paint loss on it, you can fix that. There's like enamel type paints that you can use. Some people will actually strip all of this paint and repaint it. I don't know if I really agree with that because it's no longer really a vintage button if you've like, it's sort of like buying a mid-century modern house, gutting it. And now it's a contemporary colonial because you added, you know, a floor upstairs and you completely changed the floor plan and nothing about it reminds you that it was a mid-century modern house. Or it's like buying a mid-century modern house and modernizing it 100%. If you strip all of the paint off the back of this and then repaint it, that's basically what you're doing. So you're almost like creating a brand new button um, versus, you know, if something needs a little TLC, then this basically, which I have, you just need a little bit of brown enamel paint and the gold gilt around the edge looks really, really good. So I wouldn't even touch that. And this button will come back to life. So it's not on life support now. It just, like I said, has some minor paint loss, which are really easy to fix. And this one, like some people would take this and paint this. I wouldn't. I like the character of it. It shows its age. Um, and it's an old metal button. These are actually black rhinestones in it. And this probably went on a coat. This probably was like a lady's coat button. It's really heavy. It's a he it has some weight to it. And I have several of these. You guys have seen those before. Here is a really interesting um, black button because it has like the little like light colors, like light blue, light green, yellow, etc., it's made of glass, but it also has like a brass shank that was embedded. So this is an embedded brass shank on the back. It's very interesting. Just imagine if these buttons could talk, like what would they tell us? Let's bring some buttons out to the edge so you have something to look at versus nothing. Let's put that big beauty right there. And put you right there give you some variation in colors there you go and in here these are pearl and shell buttons I'm not going to take all of them out um, some have that rainbow effect and some are brown ish and then of course the classic ivories and whites and there's some that have some blue in them a little bit of blue so thank you. I so love this box. This is like, you know, my birthday. And these are really, really pretty. I just like touching these for some reason. I took them out of the box and I'm like addicted to these already. It says right on the back that they're pink, they're washable and cleanable. Nice to know because guess what? These go on your clothes. So hopefully all of them can be washed and cleaned. But um, this is made of some sort of plastic and it has like a double disc design where there's a disc shape here and then one right on top. These will definitely be awesome for my mother-in-law and aunt-in-law's project. And I think, ooh, I'm skipping over. One of the things that I never really talk about because I don't see them as often and I need to like them, of course, and I love these. They just fell out of the box. And these are square buttons. I love miniature square buttons. I don't know why. I really don't. Um, I think because when I look at them, like when you look at clothing nowadays, when was the last time you saw a miniature or even just a square button on something that was a quality button? I probably not in a really long time especially since I when I went to New York which there will be videos about and I went to the garment district in Chelsea spoke to like four owners 
of fabric shops and they said that people really aren't looking for buttons that much anymore. They're mostly buying, like when they're making clothes or costumes or whatever, they're basically looking for zippers and things that are easy. So these are two diamond shaped ones on there. So yay, I love these. Thank you. I have to hurry up. I don't want to run out of time. Time is so precious. So what Ooh, lots of glass buttons here. Look at these. These are, these probably went on something that was relatively fancy. Really, really nice. And there's several of them. Ooh, look at these. I don't, are these glass? Yes. Ooh, I love these. Definitely using these as well. The blue glass. And there's a few of those. There's a wee little cute green one in there. Some of these are repeats, that's why I'm not. And plus, like I said, look at that effect of that button. And the shape is like a wafer, which is pretty cool. Ta-da! A lot of metal buttons. That's pretty, I love unusual shapes. And the other thing I'm going to be doing with some buttons is this is an experiment that I'm going to be doing is with some of my like metal buttons that are a little bit bent or whatever, I'm going to be like hammering them like they would hammer copper to see if I can come up with something really interesting. Look at this. This is something that reminds me of like the space age in the 1960s when we were trying to beat Russia um, to the moon. Very cool. So there's several metal buttons there. Some little pearls and shell. And here, ooh, maybe I will find an anchor button in here. That's one of the things that when you're looking for things for your charm strings, you need to find those anchor buttons. This could be one of them. Very nice. This green one. Ooh, look at the back of the way it, it almost looks like a jade that's been mixed with stone. Take these out. So there's a nice mixture of buttons in here. I really appreciate it. I did not expect this at all. <laughs> and of course, when you sent me the email, I was like, wow, what am I going to get this time? And here are, I'm not going to take all of these out, but these are military. These were would have been on a Navy um, a naval person's uniform or coat. These are for the pea coats. But there are some smaller ones that would have been for the uniforms that are in here as well. And I have some of these in my collection. And wait a minute. There you go. And these will make awesome partners with those. Ooh, and some leather buttons with that charm string type sh shank on it, which, you know, I'm definitely, of course, using those in projects. Ooh, some got damaged. I don't know what this material is. Uh, Ms. S, if you know, please let me know what it is because I have other buttons that are made with the same material. And this is what happens is they end up cracking. And I, I will see if I can repair at least one of these because this is pretty cool. It's like, it reminds me of an orange slice. Um, but I just don't know. I just want to know for educational reasons like or educational knowledge what type of material this is. If any of you guys know what this is. And I'll try to get closer. Um, please let me know. 